Happy Final Cut Pro 10.7 release day. It is finally here, the last day of the month. Apple let it go down to the wire before they released 10.7, but we now have some new features to go over and look at here in Final Cut. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will take a look uh, at a few of them. Now, before we get into some of these feature updates, I just want to go over for those of you who are not sure about updating what all it's going to entail. Not necessarily a tutorial of how to update, but just where to look, all that stuff, system requirements, the release notes. Uh, whether or not your library is going to be updated. There's a new XML version, all of that stuff. So let's stop the jibber jabber and just get right into it here. So I am in the Mac App Store and I've got Final Cut here. I have already upgraded it on my 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. But if you haven't uh, been able to find it, just go to the updates page and hit Command R on your computer and it'll refresh what apps are available for update. So we've got Final Cut Pro version 10.7. I just want to touch on the system requirements for this. This is showing that it requires Mac OS 10, 13, <laughs> excuse me, this is showing that it requires Mac OS 13.5 or later. For those of you who are on some older Intel machines, you're not going to be able to do this update. The previous version of Final Cut Pro required Mac OS 13.4 or later, so please make note of that uh, as you look to possibly update. Now let's take a look real quick at the release notes. We've got automatically scrolling timelines, which is a huge request from a lot of us for a long time. We'll take a look at that more closely. Increase editing efficiency by combining a selected group of connected clips into a connected storyline. We'll take a look at that as well. View both video and audio roles, colors easily to see the organization of a timeline at a glance. We'll take a look at that as well. Improved results with the object tracker. I am not going in depth on the object tracker, but I have a feeling that Dylan Bates, the final cut bro, is probably going to do some stuff on the object tracker. And you can also check out Ripple Training's video all about the 10.7 update. I'll link that in the description below. Use the enhanced reveal in browser feature. That's pretty minor. We're not going to touch on that. Export HEVC and H.264 files. I want to test this so that we can see what the difference is in export times between my Mac Studio, my 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro and my M2 Pro Mac Mini. Hopefully I can get to that this week so we can see what the speed increases are like. And then we've got some minor improvements and whatnot. So all of that is uh, what we've got for this relatively big feature update as far as the history of Final Cut Pro goes. Recent history, we haven't had that many substantial feature updates. So go ahead and get this installed if you're ready, but please make sure that you follow the instructions for how to back up your current version of Final Cut Pro. I'll put this article down in the description like I do for all these videos, but you wanna back up your Final Cut Pro application and you wanna back up your libraries. I highly recommend creating a time machine backup or duplicating an external hard drive where you have your library stored so that you don't update libraries, need to roll back because of some issues uh, you're having with third-party plugins, etc and um, you're stuck. I also recommend not updating mid-project. If you're on a big project, consider not updating to Final Cut Pro 10.7 until you have cleared that project. I say this a lot in many, many of my videos, um, so I don't wanna co constantly say this during the update videos, but please do your due diligence. Some third-party applications and plugins may not work correctly with 10.7, so you may run into some issues. You need to be prepared for that. So back up Final Cut Pro, back up your libraries, and even consider doing a time machine backup of your computer so that if you do update or update accidentally, you are ready to go with rolling things back. And speaking of automatic updates in the App Store, make sure that if you are editing with Final Cut Pro regularly that you have automatic updates disabled. I know it can be a little bit annoying to have to manually update all of your apps all the time, but when you have Final Cut Pro automatically update in the middle of a project and all of a sudden Color Finale Pro won't work, you've got some issues to deal with and you may not have time to do it. So let's do our due diligence, turn off those automatic updates. Okay, let's get into this. Let's see what we've got for um, for this new version of Final Cut Pro and whether or not we need a library update. No, I already know the answer to this, um, but we'll go ahead and check here. I've got a finder window open um, and some videos here. Let's take a look real quick at Oh, where did I put it? Oh, it's on my solid state drive. Here we go. Uh, so we'll go go to studio sessions and I'm going to pull up a recent video and just show you what the Final Cut Pro update uh, looks like. 
So you're going to get this screen where it's prompting you to update your library because this version is older. So if you have not duplicated your library, do it. Hit duplicate and then turn this version into a version labeled maybe 10.7 that you are okay with updating to 10.7. Then double click it and then update it and you'll be ready to go as far as that goes. Now, I'm not going to use this library. We've got um, a couple um, libraries here that already have existing content, so we can demo a few things. Um, so we know that Final Cut Pro 10.7 requires a library update, so please be co cognizant of that. Now let's check to see if we're going to have a XML update. And we go to Export XML, and we can see here we're still on version 1.11. So there is not an XML update in Final Cut Pro 10.7. We're still on version 1.11. So keep that in mind for those of you who are doing color turnover, sound turnover, etc. You're going to be okay um, as far as that goes. All right, so those two things are off the to-do list. We've got the library update, the XML version. Now let's take a look at what timeline scrolling looks like and how to use it. So I'm going to open up this um, project here. Now this is just some A-roll of me. It doesn't have a, a LUT on there, just a rough uh, multi-cam clip, okay? If we go in the multi-cam, you can see I've got all these angles. And I'm going to show you some things with the scrolling timeline. All right, so first off, how do we enable the scrolling timeline? So we go to Final Cut Pro and then Settings or hit Command Comma to bring that menu up. And then under the Playback tab, you're going to see Scroll Timeline Continuously During Playback. This will be by default turned off. I've already enabled it because I've been playing around with it this afternoon. So you want to have that checked. And you'll see here as your playhead approaches the middle of the screen, Let's see if we can get a little closer. Um, your timeline will start scrolling. Now it's a little tricky with this because I'm zoomed in or zoomed out, but let's go ahead and zoom in. You can see this pick up as it reaches the middle of the timeline window and start scrolling. Now you can use the L key on your keyboard to increase the speed of playback, of course, and the scrolling obviously is going to increase with it. I do feel like it's a little jittery personally. It feels like it's just sort of like moving one frame at a time and it just feels not as smooth as I thought Apple would make it, but maybe it's something that they can enhance a little bit later. Is it terrible? Certainly not. And the beauty of this is we can see the waveforms. They're all gener um, redrawing no problem. And if we zoom in and zoom out, <laughs> Excuse me, the waveforms are are generating almost instantly, redrawing almost instantly. So this is this is wonderful. Now here is a cool thing for all of you multicam editors or for those of you who love to blade clips while you're playing them back, check this out. I can finally hit the blade key. The waveform doesn't go flat on the other side of the edit and we're good to go to just go through your edits with that blade tool. Now here's another one. I'm going to go ahead and scroll this up here. For those of you who use the multicam and use the one, two, three, four keyboard um, keys on your keyboard to change the angle, check this out. I can hit two to switch to my close angle. I can hit three to switch to my screen recording. Back to one if I want to go back to my main wide angle, and then I can go two to get to that close up. So we can finally have the timeline scroll while we do our rough cut on our multicams using the keyboard shortcuts to, uh, to change angles, which is really, really cool. So that's what I've discovered so far with the scrolling timeline. Of course, if you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments and maybe in some subsequent videos, I can go a little bit more in depth on features of the scrolling timeline or use cases with the scrolling timeline. Um, so the other feature that we're going to look at is collapsing connected storylines. So let's go ahead and pull up this edit. And I'm going to show you what I think the spirit of this is, okay? I think a lot of you out there were maybe hoping that, and this is including me, that the connected storyline feature would take some complex stuff going on above your primary storyline and essentially collapse it down into what I would call an open compound clip. Something that lets you still edit the contents of that open compound clip while seeing the context of your main timeline. But after playing around with this feature, it's not really that. This feels more like a cleanup tool 
for more basic uh, layers of video that you have above your primary storyline. And I think what this really has to do with is there's a lot of editors out there that stack up video clips above the primary storyline without doing some general housekeeping as they go to make everything nice and buttoned up like this. And when they go to clean up their timeline, it's a fairly excruciating process to do all this trimming of their clips so that they line up correctly. And what collapsing it to a connected storyline does, it allows you to select all these clips right click them and then choose collapse to connected storyline so that it, it does that cleanup automatically for you. Where this gets tricky is when you have multiple layers, you have um, video uh, or title clips in there, you've got compositing going on where you're doing screening or dodge burn or different um, compositing with clips that are stacked above each other. I don't think that this tool is going to be for those of you who are doing things like that. I think really the spirit of this is to allow you to take just some multiple layers of video clips that are above your timeline and collapse them into that connected storyline. I've been kind of messing around with some other complicated things that I have going on um, where there's titles and whatnot mixed in with the, with this stuff and it behaves in a way that I wasn't really expecting. Uh, so if we select all these and then right click, we've got collapsed to connected storyline and you can see that things got destroyed. Um, so those titles that were there didn't really work uh, with being able to collapse them. And that might be because they're already in a secondary storyline or just the nature of what that media is. Um, I'm going to need to do a little bit more research to understand it. Now, the other thing, too, when you collapse to a connected storyline, you are making a very strong commitment to do this because there's nothing you can do to, like, right-click it and, and choose to sort of undo. Um, uh, you can undo it, of course, but there's nothing you can do later on after you've done some other edit operations to right-click it and sort of uncollapse the connected storyline like you can with a compound clip because with a compound clip option excuse me um, select all these and then hit option G um, CC demo later on let's say you've gone on and you've done a bunch of editing you want to come back to this compound clip you can break it apart right you can expand um, uh, you can undo uh, the the compound clip by hitting command shift G and then it puts everything back to the way it was um, as it appears inside the compound clip. Now the compound clip is gone and you can mess around with this stuff. You can't do that with the, the connected storylines feature. So keep that in mind that it can be destructive. So if you collapse some connected, if you, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to, how to word this. If you collapse to a connected storyline, I highly recommend playing back through it to make sure that it still looks the way that you intended before you move on to do other edits. Because once you move on to do other edits, the only way to undo that connected storyline, that collapsed to connected storyline, is to undo. You're going to have to Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z to get it to go back to the way it was beforehand. So please keep that in mind. Now, something I want to demo for all of you, what I noticed with this was... If we right click this, we see uh, we've got collapse connect to collect. <laughs> I can't speak today. Collapse to connected storyline, but there's no keyboard shortcut for that. So, what if you want to use a keyboard shortcut? Well, let's go ahead and go through that process. So, if we go to Final Cut Pro and then command sets, I've got my customized 14 inch MacBook Pro command set. I'm going to hit customize, and then I'm making sure I'm in my 14 inch MacBook Pro. Um, customize keyboard layout, and I'm going to do a search for connected storyline. So we have it here, collapse to connected storyline, and there's no keyboard shortcut assigned, and I want to assign a keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to assign it option A. And now, if I hit close, or if I hit save, and then close, if I select all these and hit option A, 
it's going to do the collapse to connected storyline automatically. I don't have to right click and choose it from the menu. So that's a great tip for anyone that really likes to make customized keyboard shortcuts like I do. Option A, and then if I use this regularly enough, I can program this to my Stream Deck mobile app so I can push just one button and it's going to collapse to a connected storyline. So that's a really cool feature there. Now, I want to touch on the video rolls feature and what that means. Before this update, if you right clicked on something like this and assigned it a video roll of a still, it won't change the color, right? And it still does it in 10.7. But if you expand the audio components and hit, that's not correct. If you right click and choose expand audio components, you'll see it changes color. Did the wrong keyboard shortcut there. I think it's the control S one I should be doing. Yeah, that's correct, control S. So I put it back and it goes back to blue. I hit control S and the audio portion stays blue and the video portion takes on that video roll. So this is a great way for those of you, especially me doing J and L cuts, audio edits, crossfades, all that stuff, to be able to see the video roll in the proper color and the audio roll in its proper color. Now, I still wish there was a feature where I could enable a preference that said if I want a clip with audio to default to showing me the video roll color, not the audio roll color, I can change that preference. That's a feature I want in Final Cut. On a lot of these clips, especially if it's um, it's not like dialogue in a narrative film. It's just background noise that I want to keep in at a low level. It's not a high priority for me to understand what the audio role is. It's a higher priority for me to understand what the video role is, but I'm still going to keep the audio role and the audio on the clip. So that's something that I would really like to see. So again, when you assign a video role to a clip, whether it's in the timeline or up in the browser, when you control S and expand, it's going to show the video in its proper color and the audio in its proper color. So this is a very welcome update. Now again, I talked about the object tracker and all of that stuff. I'm not going to go into that, but again, the Ripple training video, and I'm sure Dylan Bates video, which is going to be out here pretty soon, if it's not out already, that's going to be um, a little bit more of an in-depth demo of the object tracker. But that's all I've got for these three key features I wanted to show you all. Please do your due diligence to back up your Final Cut Pro application, your libraries, all of that before you update. Consider this your hub for questions or concerns about the Final Cut Pro 10.7 update. So drop your comments below. Ask me questions as I roll out subsequent content about this update and possibly some live streams. I want to make sure I have your questions and concerns ready to go so we can figure those out. I still have some more exploring to do, of course, and I'll do, be doing that shortly. But uh, I think that's all we've got for now. Final Cut Pro 10.7, it's finally here, a more substantial update that we've all been waiting for, but still not as substantial as a lot of us were hoping for. Uh, I'll go in more into that, I think, in the coming weeks. But uh, until then, that's all I have got for now. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.